We've been working on this Ultimate 3 Whisper Kit from QRP Labs. Here's a sneak peek at what the project looks like when we get it built. Stick around and in this video we'll actually show you how it was done. started working on the motherboard of our whisper kit. I've installed the capacitors first. I always start with the lowest components and they have the shortest profile so I put them in first. When I solder components in like this, I solder one leg of each one first and then I turn the board over and make sure that I have them down on the PC board exactly the way I want them. When I'm satisfied that they're positioned correctly, I flip it back over and I solder the second leg. Then I clip the wires off off the back side. The instructions for this project are online. Go to their web page. They have a PDF file that has all the instructions that I need listed right here. Here's a list of the components. Gives me an idea of the order that I want to put them in. And then there's directions along here. I've taken one page that has the layout and the position of all the components and I decided that it would be more convenient if I had that so that I could handle it. So I just printed up this one page so that I could look at this diagram here that makes sure I'm giving myself the opportunity to put the components in the right location on the board. I'm soldering the crystal in right now. I've got one lead in. I've checked it on the other side of the board. We'll finish by putting the second one in. When I install crystals on a board, I like to stand the base of the crystal up a little bit off of the board, which is why you see here I have this uh, little piece of tie wrap in here as a spacer. I just slide that out, and then that gives me a little gap in here between the case of the crystal and the board. I just like to do it that way. I will install this 28 pin IC socket next. I need to be sure that I align the socket which has a notch at one end with the same notch that's on the silk screen of the PC board. <laughs> Well, there's 28 pins on that socket, so I've got it all installed right now on the board the way it belongs. If you look down here, you'll see that I made sure that the notch that's in the socket itself matches up with the, the notch that's on the PC board. That's important. It uh, helps you align everything as we progress through the project. There are places here for four transistors that are in the amplifier stage. The kit comes with two and I will install those here, Q1 and Q2. Maybe I might want to order a couple more to increase the power. We'll see. We'll try it the way it was made originally and see how that goes. Right now I'm installing the two transistors that come for the power amplifier. I only have one pin soldered on each one and I'm aligning them very carefully. The reason I'm doing that is that they say we might need to add some sort of a heat sink here. And if I get these flat faces all lined up and make the transistors exactly the same height, then it'll be easy for me to attach some sort of a heat sink to the board. I think I'd like to be ready for that option in case I decide I'd like to run more power in the future. Well, I've wound another coil here, these little chokes. Take 25 turns on this one. This is a tool that I got at Harbor Freight. They're used to attach O-rings and things like that. You get a little set of two of these for a couple bucks. Get this nice end on it here that allows me to move the wires on my coil around. It's just an all-round handy little tool to have. You might want to look for one of these yourself. Let's look at the progress here so far. It's coming along. I've installed some headers. You can see here that these two headers Right here, we'll take the low-pass filter that we built in part two of this series. That plugs in there. And then our DDS module is going to plug into these headers right here, like that. So it's coming along. It's a very quick project. Well, now we're going to install a little contrast potentiometer. It's this little guy right here. There's a spot for it on the board. It's tight, but it will snap in 
right? You'll, you'll feel it snap in when it's in all the way. We'll just take that, I'll flip the board over, and I'll solder that. I'm going to deviate from the instructions that are in this PDF file. You see here that uh, we're being asked to install some wire jumpers here in several places on the board. Here at uh, W1 and W0 and W2 and W3 would not be in place if we were installing the relay, which at some point in time I think I might want to do. They recommend putting in a loop of wire, and instead of doing that, I have another solution that I'm going to consider. I have quite a few of these little male header pins that I've acquired over time. And in addition to those, I have a lot of these little shunts that just clip on here. So I can just break off pins from this little stick and install them where they will put in their jumper wires. So right in here I have installed two of these double pin headers. And so then I'll just take one of these little shunts and plug it in just like that. This will take the place of the jumper wire that they call for in the directions. There's a few other places in here that I'll be doing the same thing. Well, before I install these little header pins to connect the LCD panel to the main board, the kit comes with these nice little nylon standoffs here and little bolts. I'll put them in here like this. Attach it. Take a screwdriver and tighten it up. And then the header here goes on the underside of our board. It'll fit in right here. Fits in nice and neat right next to that standoff. And then the LCD panel is going to go here on top. Almost like a little Chinese puzzle. Oh, yes. They were telling us that this isn't going to fit completely in place here. There's a bit of a gap. Well, I've gone ahead and added two more of the bolts to sandwich this together. I have my female and male headers in between here the way I want them. I'll go ahead and solder this together now, and then we'll uh, pull it back apart. Let's pull this thing apart. Do it gently. Work those guys apart. There we go. I might take my tool here and press this thing down now. We know that the pins will go far enough through there. That looks just a little better. It'll put a little bit of gap in there when these come back together, but I think everything will be just fine. Let's see. I like it. Now, as it's typical with many of the ICs that we receive, the pins are kind of spread out when you get them, and you need to kind of close that gap a little bit. You place your chip on a hard surface and just kind of roll it a little bit on both sides. Try to bring those pins in a little bit to get these pins aligned. I'm going to go back to our breadboard again and use it as kind of a tool to, um, to straighten these pins it's so much easier to work on them when I have the space around the pins here and that will get them straight and aligned then we'll pop this out of here I like to use a tool like this just slide it on there the IC comes out now we make sure that our notches are lined up and we'll add the at mega 328 to the board. I need to insert a little cautionary note here. I live on the water in a very humid climate. Static electricity is rarely a problem. If you live in an area where static electricity is more prevalent, you should take proper precaution when working with integrated circuits and electrical components. Well, that pretty much finishes up the main part of the construction of this project. We'll be ready to test it out here in a little bit. But let's take a look at the boards and see how they all come together. We've got everything stacked up here. We've got the DDS board plugged in. Here's our low pass filter. It's all plugged in. And then on the other end, we have our LCD panel. Behind the panel in the two corners, there are buttons so that when you're looking at the screen, you have buttons that you can press to manipulate the menus. Let's hook it up to some power and see what happens.
Okay, I brought out this little 5 volt regulated power supply that I found online. Fairly inexpensive. I like the way that it just plugs in to a breadboard and then it provides the power to the rails on both sides of the board. So we have 5 volts along here and then ground and then opposite on the other side we have 5 volts and ground. Right now I'm going to run this thing with a 9 volt battery. As I recall I can put anything between 7 volts and 30 volts DC or AC into this power supply and I'll get a regulated 5 volts out. So it should be nice and clean. We're going to plug this battery in and with any luck we're going to see LEDs light up all over the place. So they seem to be doing that. Let's take a look at the screen over here and see if it says anything. There's nothing showing on the screen right here, which I'm not going to be too alarmed about yet because there is a an adjustment here that we can use to adjust the contrast and see if we can get something to appear. Uh huh. Yeah, I see some squares there. Not seeing any any text on there. We're going to have to figure out why that is. Maybe this is going to require a little bit of troubleshooting. Troubleshooting the problem was a lot easier than I thought it might be. It turns out that the battery that I was using was just a little on the weak side, was barely putting out 7 volts, and that wasn't quite enough to get through the little power supply. Uh, it was putting out only about 3.5 volts. Uh, I could light a few LEDs, but not really get much going. So now with a new battery in circuit, you can see here on the screen that we have uh, contact. Our little Ultimate 3 is fired up and running. It's talking to us. So it's time for me to figure out how to program this thing, get my call sign in it, and see what kind of magic it can do. Well, that winds up this video right here in our series. When we come back, we'll see what we can make this thing do. Come back again soon. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.